All right, guys, here's your third installment in the holiday workout series, chest and forearms. Now, just so you guys know, all the exercises in this routine were put together to make sure you can hit your entire chest from every angle and get in and out of that gym in 45 minutes or less. As you guys can see, we had some more fun decorating the living room, got the coffee table set up. We got Mr. and Mrs. Claus over here. Santa Claus is rocking with his candle. Mrs. Claus is rocking with hers. And we did want to go outside and get the lights done. As you can see, we have them all starting to get laid out over here. But I actually had a birthday present that I had to redeem last night. It was corn and slipknot tickets. And it was given to me by Hermanite John Biardi. So thank you so much for the tickets. Erica and I had a blast. <laughs> Now on to the workout. Alright Hermanites, now I know you've all been waiting for the chest workout part of this series. Now like I said, in and out of the gym in under 45 minutes. But I had one more goal today, and I know how much you guys love chest, so I wanted you to leave the gym hating this workout. Now this workout's going to take you a short amount of time to accomplish, but don't think it's because it's a wimpy workout. You're doing non-stop sets, only taking 30 second rest periods in between each one. Once again, we're working with a reverse pyramid style workout. So you're going to be increasing the weight as many times as you can as you go from set to set. I'm going to have my friend Brian here today helping me, spotting me on some of these exercises just because I know I'm going to fail out. And the number one reason why I know I'm going to fail on some of these reps is because we're going to be supersetting every single set with forearms. Now, when you superset forearms with chest presses, what's going to happen is your hands are going to go numb and your forearms are going to feel like they're going to explode, which is going to make gripping that bar so much harder. So the harder it is to squeeze that bar, the more muscle you're going to have to activate to control it. So let's get ready and start off with the first exercise, which is going to be the barbell bench press. All right, nation, let's get started with that first exercise, which is going to be the barbell bench press. Now, I'm starting off with 155. We're doing 15 repetitions. If you guys haven't done any warm-up sets yet, make sure you warm up first. You don't want to have any shoulder injuries. You can either do a shoulder warm-up. I'll put a link to a shoulder warm-up video in the top left-hand corner. Or if you want to, you can simply go really light on the barbell bench press and do a few sets of 10 repetitions with really light weight. Now, as you guys can see, I'm going all the way up and all the way down with every single repetition. Keep your form tight. As soon as you finish, go straight into the barbell wrist curl. We're supersetting chest with forearms. Now, as you guys can see, I'm using the bench, I'm sitting back, and I'm just hanging my wrists off the edge of the, of the bench here. Make sure when you do this, you keep your hands pretty close together, and you go all the way up and all the way down with each and every single repetition, especially when it starts to burn. That's the time you really want to focus on your form to get the full benefit of the exercise. Now we're only taking 30 second breaks in between each set, which gives you enough time to rest a little bit and bump up your weight. And as you guys can see, the first set's complete. We're about two minutes and 20 seconds into the routine and we're starting our second set. Set two, I bumped the weight up to 165. Now we're doing 12 repetitions. Now remember guys, the whole point of this workout is volume and to work on strength as well. The volume is going to help with the muscle gain by pyramiding the sets down and increasing the weight. We're going to be able to attack a little bit of those strength gains as well. Now it might not seem like a lot of weight to you guys. It might seem like it's less weight than what you're normally used to working with. But that's the point. We're hitting these 30 second rest periods, which means your chest is barely having any time to recover. The less time your muscles have to recover, the more fatigued they are. So when you put the weight back on and you attack those muscles, you really have to strain a lot more muscle fiber to do the same exercise, especially with supersetting forearms into the mix here. You guys are going to start to quickly notice that as you go back and forth from the barbell bench press to the forearms, that you're going to have a hard time gripping that bar. And as you have a harder time gripping that bar, it's going to make the exercise even harder as well. So now we're on to set three, 175 pounds, going for 10 repetitions. 
Now, as you can see, my form on my bench press, you know, it's pretty solid. I'll put a link in the top left-hand corner of the video if you guys are having a hard time with your bench press form. I mean, I'm still constantly answering questions. People are asking me why I have an arch in my back and, you know, all these different things that I'm doing. Why? I've been told it's wrong, blah, 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 blah. You know, you're supposed to use your internal belt to get the most power out of every single one of your lifts. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm flexing my glutes, I'm pushing my knees out, I'm keeping my core super tight, and um, as I go down and up with the bar, I'm keeping my core tight, holding my breath to get as much power as possible. Now, as you guys can see, I didn't have a spotter on this set, and I wasn't able to complete all the repetitions in one go. It's totally okay to put the bar down, take a few seconds, and then pick the bar back up and complete the set. Don't think the set's over, just because you can't finish the repetitions. If you're going for 10 reps and you only get eight, put the barbell down, take a brief rest, and get those last two reps. You guys can see here from uh, my face that my forearms are starting to burn pretty well. And that's what it's all about, guys. I want you to feel that burn. Forearms is probably one of the hardest exercises to push through the burn on because it does hurt a lot. I'm not gonna lie, you know, it hurts. So push through it, get it done. Here we are now, 175, all the way up, all the way down. Got my buddy Brian in here spotting me. Wasn't sure how I would do with these repetitions, but I wanted to make sure that I was getting it done and pushing through as hard as I can. One second. I might need to definitely be on the next one. So I'm gonna go up to um, 185. Yeah. Now as we move on to set four for the forearm wrist curls, uh, I'm sticking with 30 pounds all the way through. For me, it's starting to get pretty painful by the time I get to 15 reps. So sticking with 30 and pushing myself is definitely going to work for me. I was going to increase only by five, but I got a spotter, so I'm going to go up an extra 10. So now we're moving on to set five, 195 pounds, six repetitions. Now guys, make sure you're being extremely strict with those 30 second rest periods or else the, the routine's not gonna work as intended. The whole goal of this is to push through muscle fatigue to work on activating as much muscle fiber as possible to get through each and every one of these sets. Brian's here to spot me. I'm definitely needed a spot on this set and I wanted to make sure I still had good form on all the repetitions. Don't let your form go and don't start doing half reps just because you started to get tired. If you need to lower the weight, do it. If you have a spotter and that works for you, then that's what you're going to do. Now here we are for set five, once again sticking with the 30 pounds. These hurt so much, you have no idea. If you guys are like me and you're getting here, it's going to burn. Just focus, get the curls done, do whatever method you have to do to count in your head to get yourself to 30. I think forearms are the only exercise that even if you use momentum, it doesn't matter. It still just hurts so much. Oh, thanks. This guy right here. I was just going to put on a 10. He made it look nice. <laughs> He's right getting ready to go to the bar after this ring. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking open some beers. You have one just like that, man. I have one too. You gotta bring some jewelry on. You gotta look good for this video, right? <laughs> Last set of chances. I can't even really close my hands right now. That's why we're supersetting with the forearms. It's gonna make the bench press even harder. Ready? Now we're gonna move on to the last set, set six, 225 pounds, four repetitions. By the time I got to this set, guys, my chest was fried, but I wanted to push it as hard as I could. Brian's here once again spotting me, making sure I don't kill myself, which is always a good thing. <laughs> now make sure your form is spot on, bring that bar all the way down, and if you do have a spotter, really let him let you push through the rep as much as possible. Granted, you want that help, but try to do as much of the work as you can on your own. And now let's go to that last set. No slacking, guys. Don't drop the weight. Use the same weight. Set six, 30 pounds, 30 reps. Just push through the pain and get it done. Something that actually helps me, especially with stuff like forearms or abs or calves when you're trying to push through the burn, 
is I'll count like to five and I'll just count to five six times. That way that small number seems very, well, 30 reps seems more like a small number when you're counting to five 30 times and counting all the way to 30. I'm not gonna, I can't even feel my hands. I couldn't even feel the bar the whole time doing that. Like, just, I just I could feel there was weight there, but I couldn't even feel my hands. That was a good spot, I, I needed that. All right, let's move on to the next exercise. All right, now we're gonna move on to the second exercise, which is the barbell incline bench press. Now for set one, I decided to go with 125 pounds. We're doing 15 repetitions. It's hard to figure out which weight you're gonna use when you move on to the next exercise, especially if you're not used to doing a fast paced routine like this. 30 second rest periods, high reps, reverse pyramiding. So I wanted to make sure I picked the weight that I could actually complete all 15 repetitions with. This was probably about 15 to 20 pounds, a little too light for me, but that's okay because we can make up for it on the next set by increasing the weight. Now, instead of now doing the barbell wrist curl, we're gonna do the barbell reverse wrist curl, and I'm gonna lower the weight. I lowered it down to 20 pounds, but we're still doing 30 repetitions. So you guys can see right here, I'm just resting my arms on my legs, hanging my wrists over my knees, I have my thumb wrapped around the barbell. I'm gonna go all the way up and all the way down. A lot of people when they do this exercise, they don't really bring their wrists all the way up on each rep, they kind of stop neutral, push through neutral, get all the reps done. Set two, up to 135 pounds. Now we're doing 12 repetitions. As you guys can see from my form, I'm using the same form that I use in the barbell bench press. I got my knees pushed out, slight arch in my back, Glutes are flexed, keep my core nice and tight. I'm bringing the barbell all the way down to my chest on every single repetition. Do not do half reps because they will not count, okay? All the way down, all the way up, fight through the pain. And make sure you guys are sticking to those 30 second rest periods in between each set. As soon as you finish, get right back up, grab that barbell and start doing the barbell reverse wrist curls again. This exercise is probably the hardest of the two. I feel like when you fatigue on the regular wrist curls, you can really kind of push yourself through them. But on the reverse wrist curls, as you start to fatigue, it gets really hard to not kind of jump your arms around. So if you need to take a little bit of a break in between these sets to make sure you get all the repetitions, that's fine. And as you guys can tell by my facial expressions, it's really starting to burn. And that's always a good thing. <laughs> It's your thumbs that give out first. Your thumbs are like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. All right, that was okay. Let's go up to 10. Moving on to the next set, set three, 155 pounds. Now we're doing 10 repetitions. Now this is a really good example, guys, you guys are gonna see on this set of spotter communication. You need to make sure that you and your spotter know what you're going for on these reps. As you guys can see, I'm starting off strong, full range of motion, bringing the bar all the way down. But my spotter doesn't know how I feel as I'm progressing in my reps. I know how I feel, he doesn't. So you need to communicate with your spotter to get the most out of your sets. Two more, ready? Yep. Now on to forearms guys, same thing. Set three, 20 pounds, 30 repetitions, push through the pain. If you need to pick a steady pace to go at, that's fine. As you guys can see, I've taken a little bit of a break when I have to, just to make sure I get all of the repetitions out. Don't stop at neutral, push through neutral, all the way down, all the way up. Make as many goofy faces as you need to, just get it done. Just for 
good measure, even though it's going to suck. I'm still going to up the weight, but I'm just going to up it by two and a half on each side. All right, the last set of the barbell incline chest press. Set four, 160 pounds, eight repetitions. Starting off strong, pushing through every single one of those reps. Full range of motion, knees pushed out, glutes flex, core tight, all the way down, all the way up. Get the intensity where it needs to be to get the most out of the set. And if you need a spotter, have your spotter step in. As you guys can see, Brian's there. He's ready for me. And I didn't really need him on that last set, but to have him there helped me push through and get all the reps done. And now we're going to move on to the last set of the super set with uh, reverse wrist curls. Again, guys, I'm sticking with 20 pounds here. I really don't want to drop the weight if it burns. If you can increase the weight, great. I kind of wish we had a 25 pound bar to use in my gym, but we only go in increments of 10. So 20 had to do. If you guys have a 25 pound bar or you want to make one for this exercise and you want to just have it laying next to you in case you need it, that's a good idea as well. So we decided that it's 10 reps and 20 freakouts. So <laughs> do what you want to do. <laughs> it just hurts. <laughs> All right, let's get ready and move on to the last exercise. This is going to be a single arm cross body chest press. So now we're going to move on to the final exercise. We're about 25 minutes into this workout. Single arm cross body chest press. This is actually a pretty unique exercise. Um, it's going to allow you to really activate your chest. I'm going to use about 50 pounds on set one. And what you're going to do is just use the standard chest press machine, but turn your body sideways. And you want to make sure you guys can see from this angle, obviously, but I'm pushing through each repetition all the way through the movement as far as I can. You want to make sure you lock out your arm with each and every repetition to fully shorten your chest muscle, okay? All the way forward, all the way back, full range of motion. Try your best not to use momentum on this exercise. Be in control of the weight on every single rep. Now, again, you're only resting 30 seconds between sets. Gives you just enough time to change the weights and move on. Now, I personally, on this exercise, I kind of figure as you go from side to side, that part of your body is resting. So I did increase the weight, set to 55 pounds. We're sticking with 10 repetitions all the way through. But instead of waiting 30 seconds, you know, it takes about probably 15 seconds to do each set. So by the time I do a set on my left arm, and then I move to my right arm, that's been 15 seconds of rest for my left arm, get up, change the weight, sit down, that's about 30 seconds. So that's why I'm just powering through this. But as you guys can see, controlling the weight on the way back, you know, control that negative, pushing all the way through on the positive, fully extending my arm, really activating the chest you guys can see the striations popping everything's moving increase the weight again set three 60 pounds 10 repetitions push all the way through the movement and for those of you guys who don't have access to a machine like that you can simulate the same thing using a cable machine now granted you won't have the the, the back of the the machine to hold yourself in place with so you might not be able to go as heavy but you still can get really great chest activation by doing this exercise with a cable machine. But let's jump back into the workout. As you guys can see, I haven't started. L uh, uh, left eyebrow is properly raised, which lets you guys know that it's starting to burn and hurt. <laughs> Those facial expressions never fail on these routines. Pushing all the way through in each and every set. We got two sets left. Let's bump the weight up again. Set four, 65 pounds. In case you guys haven't been able to tell, I'm just bumping my weights up in five pound increments, making sure that I'm able to get full range of motion every single rep. Now, a lot of guys I see when they use this machine, even if they're using it for the regular chest press, they usually put way too much weight on and they usually they put the seat way too high. As you guys can see, I have the seat pretty low. You, you need to visualize how the machine is working. So you can see that the handle is pushing pretty much straight across horizontally so that's the position you need to seat yourself in so that your arm and your elbow can follow the range of motion of the machine if you put that seat too high you'll be pushing down on the handle in every rep if you put the seat too low 
you're going to be pushing up on every single rep or pushing up on the handle. We don't want to have any of that friction. We want to push straight across, so make sure you adjust that seat properly. So here we are in the last set. It's the last set, guys. Bump that weight up again as much as you can. And like I said, focus on full range of motion. And if you can power through this exercise like I am without really taking any rest and just going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, that's how you're going to get the most out of this exercise because once again, this routine is all about muscle fatigue. We're trying to get in the gym and get out as fast as possible. So we really don't care what the weight is. We just care about that pump and breaking down as much muscle tissue as possible. Alright guys, yeah, that's your chest holiday ab, I mean, well, can't even speak right, that's the chest and forearm workout for the holiday series. This workout took me 30 minutes to complete, so you're definitely going to be in and out of the gym in 45 minutes or less. And remember guys, if you want a link to the entire playlist of all these videos, I'll post that at the end of this one, and if you have time left over like I do, you can still hit those abs and check out the ab workout in this series as well. Be sure to like and comment below, subscribe for more great videos, and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.